All right, so I'm just going to run through uh, installing a big blue button system with the remote desktop uh, extensions on uh, an AWS instance. So let's just go into AWS, EC2. I'm going to start a new instance. Uh, this guy, I'm just actually going to even blow him away. Yeah, 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 yeah. A new instance. I'm going to go with Ubuntu 16. I'm sorry, 18. Ubuntu 18 is my base system type. Uh, what do we like to use? C5 2x large. Uh, it's just recommended by the uh, Big Blue Button team and uh, seems like a a reasonable choice. Instance details. I do want to take a look at the uh, storage. Should be fine. Configure security group. This is um, we need more than SSH. Obviously, we need web access. There's um, what do you call it? Uh, UDP access for the, the video and the audio. I'm just going to let all traffic through. Uh, yeah, it's open to the world, I know. Launch it. Use my laptop's uh, key pair. It all looks good. Where am I here? Here's my instance. I'm going to uh, go into it. Get my public address here. And let's go back to... Uh, what do I do here? Here we go. Oh, let's go SSH into it. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to SCP something to it. And that is my um, my uh, my key for uh, configuring the DNS. That I do need to uh, configure DNS on this thing. So uh, let's just do a sudo app update and get our latest package archives. Um, I'm going to get uh, Emacs. I'm going to edit some files. What else do I want? I want DD client. That's what I use to update my DNS. Um, I want Python, but I got to get the Python 2 version of Python out of hip. I think that should all be good. Um, this is DD, um, DD client chattering and I don't care about any of this because I copied that config file up and I'm going to use that config file because it's already got my keys in it uh, from, uh, let's see if while it's doing this, let me just look around here if I can find, uh, no, no. Uh, what do I got here? Set password search for no. Didn't quite do what I wanted. I didn't do what I wanted because I used the wrong symbol. There we go. There we go. Let's just do this. And this will let me show you what that file looks like without uh, presenting the password. <coughs> I just I just X'd out the password with a said. Um, it's just uh, authentication for Google. Um, I need to install Python. Uh, pip install Python. So we'll get Python, and now we can do that user local bin Python. I'll report my uh, public IP address, and that's what I'm going to assign to collaborate.freesoft.org. So let's just go ahead and move this to Etsy. That file is, uh, I'm going to take a quick look at it. It's, uh, it's the one that came in the pack. It's the one that came in the package, and it's nothing because I skipped through all that configuration stuff. 
because like I said, I don't need it. I've got it right here. And let's do it. Client, I want to enable it at run daemon. So, uh, daemon, I want to turn false just to, if you don't know, sad. It uh, looks like magic, but it's uh, just turn that false to true. And uh, dd client, I'm going to stop, ah, sudo, stop it, start it. Um, doing sleeping huh did it, it should have actually that should have been enough I think I've got it all yeah right there updating collaborate.freesoft.org with the IP address set so yeah it updated my dynamic DNS so just done uh, a little bit um, it'll propagate through and we'll have collaborate.freesoft.org pointing to this machine which is essential um, we have to have that to do our uh, our SSL but uh, in the meantime Let's just go uh, put our name in a few other places. This is a good place to put it in. I don't know, like the recommended way, I think, right now of announcing to the machine what its own, um, what its own name is. I know there's also a host name. I want to make that collaborate. Uh, could reboot, pick that up. I'm going to say host name. Gonna run it. I just set it now. If I log right back in again, yeah, my name is now showing as collaborate. All right. So what do I want to do now? Um, I want to go to uh, my uh, my instructions here, and uh, I don't have them really published right now. But uh, instructions from the what do we got here? What do we? This is going to be some. This I'm just. This will be in the published instructions. Um, that's the install command. What do I want to do here? S your site name is going to be collaborate.freesoft.org. And my email is, of course, cosign at freesoft.org. And that all looks, I'm actually, I haven't updated this machine yet. Um, don't do this. I'm just putting it to my development machine because I haven't updated everything on the, all the, the public stuff. But other than that, that uh, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and run it. And this will take, oh, I don't know, 15, nah, probably not. Let's see. 10 to 24, let's try it. take about 10 minutes. Um, let's see if that all works. While I'm doing that, I'll let it run and let it record. Maybe I will go and, uh, have I updated everything here, come to think of it? Maybe I haven't actually. Hmm. Let me make sure I get everything updated in my uh, repository here. Yeah. Nope. That's all up to date. Just doing stuff on the other screen, watching this thing go. It looks fine. Mm. I'm syncing up the archive on the website so that you don't have to use any kind of special name. www will work fine instead of using the CTO, which is the development system. And uh, just let it go. It seems to be doing its thing.
didn't turn on the firewall. Maybe I should have. I mean, it's really going to be wide open. There's some stuff that um, a lot of like a lot of TCP um, sockets used internally by Big Blue Button. It probably is best to uh, throw the firewall switch into its uh, into its setup. Maybe I should even come back and do that later. Let's take a look at the help on the BBB install and see what I want to do with that. That's the cert bot exchange to uh, install. <coughs> yeah, hmm, what's happening here? Oh, good. Okay. Look fine. Um, now it's the cert bot exchange to get a uh, an SSL key for the server. You needed the uh, the uh, DNS name, 
set right for that to work okay and it's just about done we are going to get a warning here i'm not too worried about it I, it, it just it is a known problem but it only affects listen only mode oh uh, what do we got yeah it only affects listen only mode just don't use listen only mode until i get it fixed um all right so what's next on the uh instructions configure authentication i'm going to go with the uh the auth jwt um, the, the Java Web Tokens uh, method of doing authentication. We have to do some kind of authentication. I guess we have installed the system. We haven't given it an authentication method yet. Okay. So we now should be able to do. We actually log in. I'm going to give myself a, a login key. It's good until the end of the month. Moderator, and my name is Brent Bakla. And this now should work. Let's come back to the browser and see if it does. Oops. This anymore. All right, let's see what we got. And it, okay, it looks pretty good. We go with don't do the other one. That's the other one. The, um, it was the other one that wasn't working. We listen to this. Okay, microphone. You are currently working. the only audio. person in this conference. Looks good. We got a uh, a public share the share remote desktop, but really uh, can't yet share remote desktop because we haven't installed any of our targets since the next step um i'm going to go with vnc collaborate i don't even have i mean the other one uh proxy uh wss proxy that is for um uh let's see do that that is for um if you just have just like just an existing uh uh, VNC server you want to talk to, and that's fine, but I don't have one running. Uh, at least certainly not one that I can access from AWS. Okay, but I got the VNC Collaborate. Now, um, a couple more steps before I turn it on. Um, I want at least a terminal. Uh, and uh, there's a bunch of stuff that comes with it. And we actually need DBus. Um, Apparently it's not in the uh, GNOME, I think GNOME Terminal will not start without it, it should be listed as a dependency, you would think. Uh, but I'm going to go, yeah, I think we need that too. Um, and that's all we absolutely, oh here's something interesting, I'm going to do this. Uh, we need to do this here. Etsy scale because um, I mean you can get away without this but uh, I don't like uh, like the um, the standard uh, the standard FVWM config I don't think it looks particularly good uh, at least on a remote desktop but anyway um, now that's all running so let's go back to here and we should be able to share a remote desktop for um, for the, uh, um, yeah, for the uh, collaborate tool, it is this one. It is VNC JWT. For the proxy um, server, it's, it's proxy. We don't need a password. All users can operate. Let's hit it. And, and, and there it is. But I didn't get the, uh, eh, didn't get the, uh, th th this is the uh, desktop I didn't want. The, uh, and default configuration here. What did I do wrong here? Huh. Oh, I didn't make the directory. Ah. Ah, VWM. That's what it was complaining about. And when I sued, I didn't. It's like, why is it saying no, no file or directory? Uh, copy, paste. Okay, so now I'm going to kill all. It created a user. It, you know, when I logged in. As Brent Bakla, just now, just now, I logged in as my um, my uh, big blue button user Brent Bakla. It created a user on the system, Brent Bakla, and uh, I could go now. See what Etsy Scale does? It copied that config file into his home directory, except that it didn't exist. So I'm going to do this. I am going to kill all of the processes in that user. That will make it. It, it broke that thing. It made it go away. And I'm even going to do a uh, Dell user and blow away his home directory. 
Uh, just it'll just come back cleanly. Okay, let's try it again. Hide remote desktop. It actually doesn't just hide it. It uh, disconnects it, and clicking again will reconnect it. And and there it is. And just like there's a black screen and the mouse doesn't do anything, that's because the desktop is locked. I'm going to click unlock remote desktop, and now I can move around. I'm going to hit terminal. I already installed GNOME terminal. Uh, doesn't look like a, it's a real um, easy to read, but there is a, um, a program that was installed. I think set GNOME terminal fonts. Uh, what happened? It, 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 it needs dconf. Yeah, we need dconf. Which one's dconf? Dconf CLI. That's right. Apt install dconf CLI is. Ah, I can't do that from there because I'm not privileged. sudo apt install dconf CLI. Uh, this is just a little program that sets some fonts. Go in here, change my profile. You could have done this from its. Uh, its standard profile. I'm gonna oh look I'm gonna set root solid orange. Give myself a little more interesting background. I'm gonna do an X R and R F B will set my display geometry. I think twelve eighty by seven sixty eight doesn't look too bad for uh, a remote desktop. It's definitely at a lower resolution. It actually gives you this error here. Um, but it worked. You saw it changed. It worked. I don't know why it gives you an error, but no. So this is a quick look at my history here. Um, did, set terminal fonts didn't work until I did the install dconf CLI. That gave me uh, profiles with a bunch of different fonts. Just makes it easier to change fonts. You certainly can go in and do the profile by hand. Set root orange and change the frame buffer to be this thing. So let's take a look at now teacher mode. I'm going to um, give myself another login. Uh, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say just the same thing, the make login script. Let's make this Charlie Clown. I'm not going to have him be a moderator. So he's just going to be a user. We're going to copy this link and we'll just uh, yeah, just stick him into this window here. All right, so Charlie's going to come in here. We're going to get some feedback because we got two tabs connected. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. blah, blah, blah. Disconnect you are audio currently the only person Charlie. in this conference. Um, actually, I don't want to do that. I'm going to reconnect my audio on Charlie because I want to show off the deaf feature and do the echo test again. Okay. 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 You are now muted. So I've muted both of these users now. And uh, you'll see Charlie immediately got um, a desktop because I had already um, uh, shared a desktop, so he gets his own desktop. And uh, set GNOME terminal fonts. I'm going to flip my terminal to be. Large, same thing. Oh, the uh, you know you something you can do. X set root to solid beige. Yeah, that looks nice. And uh, X R and R frame buffer again. Twelve eighty by seven sixty eight looks a little better here. Um, you can actually VNC conf. You go into here. Where is this? Right there. That you can take that out and or set the default geometry to whatever you want, so you don't have to be constantly adjusting with uh, X, R, and R. But anyway, this is what I want to do here. I want to now put uh, Brent Bacala into the big blue button group. Okay, and I did that. And now when I come back here, I go back to Brent Bacala. I'm just going to again disconnect and reconnect. I mean, now I am in. Whoa, what do we got here? No such file directory. Oh, no SSVNC viewer. That's a missing dependency. Let me just go ahead. Hopefully, you won't have that. I'll have that fixed by the time you install this. 
Where would this be? Map search fiends. Where is this? Mm. I guess just has this to be instead. Like I said, I hope I'll, uh, I'll I'll put this. This is a missing dependency. I gotta put that in. Whoa! And we ran out of disk space. Blah, blah. Yeah, I kind of said it could just fit, but it really couldn't just fit. Um, needed a little more than eight megabytes. Let's just um quickly jump over here. We'll do some AWS operations to uh, give ourselves some more disk space. Back to the AWS console. Uh, EC2. Um, instances. Where am I getting this? Annoying audio. Audio is a little annoying here. I'm not sure exactly what's causing it. Instance. There's my uh, storage. Let's just jump on to here. I am going to. I've already got it selected. Modify it. And I give myself uh, two more megabytes. Don't really need that much. Done, done, done. Alright, let's come back to here. See how quickly it takes. Proc partitions. Uh, actually, it took. Yeah, I, I mean, this is this one's significantly bigger. Um, LS block. Probably need to be root. No, I don't need to root through that. Okay, see, it's already jumped to 10 gig. Now I just need to uh, repartition um, nvme 0 and 1. Let's delete it. P. No, N for new partition 1. Looks good, looks good. Uh, I think I want to make it bootable. A. Oh, no, I don't want to remove the signature. A. Uh, yeah, that all looks good. Let's write that out. And now let's block again. Now the partition is bigger, and I need to do a sudo e2, no, e2 resize. Resize. Is it E2? E2? How do I resize? E2. Re resize 2FS. And it's dev NVMe 0 and 1 P1. Alright. Gave myself some more disk space. Hopefully, that um, install was not like yes. It was interrupted. It had it had a disk space in the middle of its operation. Let's see if uh, it can just recover from that. Uh, looks okay. All right, let's go take a look and see if. Whoops. What do we want to do? I'm gonna go back to here again. I'm just gonna hide it, restart it. Is it gonna work? No. Still doesn't have SSV and C viewer. Okay, it didn't complete the install. Oh, I just saw it come up in the background. There it is. Okay, so this is um, we can just this warning message. I can make it go away. Okay, so now it is working. So now this is the teacher mode grid. Hopefully, um, yeah, you're gonna need a little more than eight gigabytes. I'll change the install instructions to reflect. Uh, you need at least ten. But you see what I got here? I got now my desktops. Uh, I have to. And this isn't right. I'm locked, even though it's, it's blue. I'm gonna just click it and click it. Now I'm, I'm really unlocked. I can click here. I can go into my desk, you know, Brent Bakla's desktop. Alt Shift Q brings me back to here. I can jump into Charlie's desktop, and I'm on his desktop here. He still sees his desktop because he's not in the big blue button group. He's like a student. This is all he sees is his desktop. But if I'm a teacher. I can watch what he's doing. You can see, I can I notice, just look at his terminal. I'm going to come over here and just clear it. And if I'm a teacher, I just, while I'm watching what he's doing, I can click on it. And now I can interact with his desktop like I'm on my own. 
come back to the view of all of the uh, students. Here I got mute and deaf indicators on everyone. Um, we're both muted, but we're also both undeafed. I can select deaf all viewers here, and Charlie goes deaf. The advantage of this is if you have a big class um, and you just want to like give out an assignment and then like, work with the students individually, you can use this mode, watch and see what they're doing. And then notice when I click on Charlie's desktop, he will automatically undeaf. And now I'm be, he could hear what I'm saying as I'm talking to him. When I escape out of this desktop, he defs again. So I can def the entire class, click on individual students, talk to them individually, and then when I'm kind of like ready to go back to lecture mode, I just say undef all viewers. And if there was more of them, they would all undef. So that is a quick look at installing and um, you know, basic usage of the uh, VNC Collaborate system. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Please drop me an email and uh, let me know how it goes.